Hello everybody, my name is Ace Face. This is part 7 of my tutorial series. If you do not have any prior knowledge of EVE Online and do not understand anything about EVE Online and but want to play EVE Online, go to part 1. I explain everything from the ground up without any prior knowledge required. Now we're going to be getting on our own feet and I'm going to show you how to set up a base. Let's get into it. So now we're going to get into the fun stuff. This is what I think will be fun and this is where my personal experience comes in a large part into play right here and I'll tell you how to get on your own feet, how to, how I would start if I were to start out right now. So the previous parts have been the tutorial just in general, how to you know use the controls of EVE Online and then the career agents which are then giving you brief dips into the different areas of EVE Online. But now we're going to put our knowledge into practice. So now we're in the system of Uitra, this still the system where all the career agents are we were before so what would I do now well what I would do now is I would move to a trade hub a trade hub is where a lot of stuff is being sold and bought and you can get the good prices if you want to buy something and you'll get good prices if you want to sell something so that's why I'd recommend to move all your items to a trade hub at least in the beginning so I will then go to Jita Jita is the biggest trade hub of EVE Online specifically the station Jita for Moon 4 Kaldari Navy Assembly Plant. So if we go click here on the map, the way you find this is just type Jita and you'll find here Jita 4 IV Moon 4 Kaldari Navy Assembly Plant. And then you just right click and set destination. So we're going to go here and obviously you've got all this nice stuff from the career agents we've got. And you know, I would say you move that to Jita. So what you could do is you just go to Jita, uh, put as much of this stuff here into a ship as possible, and then go back here take another ship go back there if you want to be super stingy but there's a, there's, a, there's a nice trick actually that you can actually move everything in one go so we've got actually these industrials right here that we got so we double click on one of these to uh, assemble them and then we can put all our stuff in this one and also uh, you don't necessarily have to go to Jita you could go to the other trade hubs as well like for example if you see this picture here that we did, talked about before this uh, picture shows you the different trade hubs these black dots like Amar Rens, heck, but I would still strongly recommend Jita even if you're really far away because Jita is so good, has so good stocks, good prices compared to the other trade hubs. It's just the, by far the best. So that's why I would recommend it. Even if you are really far away all across the, uh, <laughs> the universe, I'd still recommend going to Jita for Kaldari Navy assembly plant. Okay, so we've got our industrial here. So how do you move all this stuff? Well, you could actually put the ships into here so when you assemble if, if a ship is assembled like you know this one here this was one we used this uh cormorant before then it has a very big volume you can see here 52,000. but if it's not assembled like it's here and it only does 2500 but 2500 is still quite a big cargo space uh, for our 4000 cargo hold here so what i do is i uh, then first off i uh, just strip fitting of all our ships first so we just we're going to now remove every single module from our from our ships right here this is so that uh, we can reprocess our ships because if we reprocess our ships into minerals then we can actually uh, the volume is a lot smaller and you will lose a bit of isk doing this but you will actually uh, it, uh the time spent hauling back and forward from Jita to this Uitra station you could have spent that time earning ISK and I'd recommend then to do this where you reprocess stuff so I, I stripped fitting now and you'll see here we've got a bunch of modules now because we stripped all the fittings out so if I were to just double click on this uh, uh, this uh, cormorant here you can see here it's got nothing equipped now and uh, I would actually just uh, go back into my industrial so the badger in my case because I'm Kaldari then I will uh, highlight everything here every ship here then I'll reprocess and you can see here this is worth 4.2 million but then when we reprocess it, reprocess it it's worth 3 million so you obviously lose a bit of isk here but the volume is a lot smaller do you see that 1500 right there so we'll just do this reprocess this there we go and then we go into our hangar here you can see here it's increased in value of our all our items here then what I'll do is I'll just control a take everything and put it into our industrial right here now this is the thing in EVE Online, there's something called gankers, people who will kill you in high sec to just try to get your stuff. Honestly, no one's really going to gank you when you've got this stuff here. This is 4 million. This is just worth hardly anything. It's never really worth any ganker's time to do this. But just for safety measures, you could buy some shield extenders here. So what I'd do is I'd buy some medium shield extenders here. So you can buy maybe four of these. And we'll put, the, put these to our ship. 
one two three four there we go and actually we could even put a large one actually let's see that large shield actually a regolith would be good because regoliths are actually compact they don't take so much space so you can actually fit one easily let's see if we can fit one here uh, okay we don't have enough power for a regolith okay so now we'll forget about the regolith because you can obviously i can't i can't fit it right here so uh, what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put this into the cargo hold then i'm just going to buy more medium shield extenders medium shield extenders it's obviously not at all really necessary to buy all these shield extenders but it's just it, it, it's just good to get in a habit of habit of tanking your industrials because people maybe will gank you in the future when you have a lot more valuable stuff like hundreds of millions definitely people will gank you and then you will definitely want to have some good tank let's see damage control damage control is an item that will actually make you uh, a lot tankier that we put in the lows which will buff every single stat on your ship you can see here we give all these resistances that increase by a lot so look here ehp this is like the essential effective hit points of uh, your ship so it factors into hp and resistances so you can see here it increases a lot by 2000 if we just increase this okay good 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 and then what i put here is some is some inertial stabilizers inertial stabilizers make you warp a bit faster so it makes you get to that 75 percent of your speed to be able to warp faster so i'd go and use these you can see here if you go in navigation if we deactivate these this align time means how long it'll take to warp so if we activate all of these you can see here it's a lot uh, faster right here okay there we go so it's pretty fit we could put some rigs on but uh, i can't be bothered right now uh, they're quite expensive and we want to use our isk on some other things later these modules we bought are hardly worth anything so we're going to go and go to jita to get on our own feet and there's two things that i plan on doing to show you guys it is what is to be get a bit more of a high risk high reward activity so uh, in EVE Online, you can have different, there's often different ways of getting income. So you can do some activities that maybe have like low risk and moderate reward, like a bit more like continuous, uh, like uh, relaxing activities to get ISK, like money. And then you can also get these like high risk, high rewards, where it's like a high likelihood you can get blown up, but there's also potential for very big rewards. So in the next video, we're gonna go hard. We're gonna go with the high risk, high reward, and that is exploration. Uh, it's uh, going in this uh, heron right here you remember the heron right here you can see that there's some community fittings right here but we're going to use a fit and this x means you don't have the skills to use this stuff here but we're going to go for a, uh, a fitting that actually doesn't have so much skill requirements so we can see here the thing i can't use are these uh, astrometrics range finding things these cause us to scan a bit better but we can actually modify this fit here we can remove these and then we can maybe put some uh, shield extenders instead just to get a bit more hp in case you were to get a hit or something uh, okay we cannot put a medium one but we can put some small shield extenders so we could put that here just to get a bit more hp with a shield extender here you could actually put something called a, a multi-spectrum shield hardener spectrum shield hardener actually no that that shield extender was a bit better so it's just got to better dig with the small shield extender one you can just look at your ehp and see what gives the most amount of ehp that's how i decide okay it's so a small shield extender there we go 2.3k and then we can see here we can there's no uh, marking up here so we can we can use this fit so i just click here start to exploration save this you can see here we've saved this has got a tick box here which means we can fly it also uh, something that we can actually do is put a few rigs on actually which are uh, this gravity capacitor upgrade this makes you able to scan a bit better so we're going to put two of these guys on here because i can imagine now we've got not so good skills the thing that's mainly going to limit it, limit us from doing a lot of good exploration is the scanning skills not the hacking skills exploration we go there there we go and it's not so those rigs are not particularly expensive so you see here this whole ship costs 1 million we are sitting here on 6.9 million so it'll be good also some tip here when it comes to jita uh, always use bookmarks so we're not we're going since we've never been in jita before we're going to just warp here at zero and i'll show you quickly is that uh, people can often what they'll do is they'll gank you when now now we are obviously not got so expensive stuff so people will very unlikely gank us but uh, what people do when you do warp to zero like you remember you did right click warp to zero 
It actually often makes you come not exactly at zero, maybe up to two kilometers away from the station. And then you'll have to travel a little bit of the distance until you are in range of the station. This will make it so that uh, they have time, that people have time to gank you. So what we will do actually is we'll actually just go here and uh, dock first because we just want to have all our wares safe. Let's dock here. Okay, there we go. We're docked here. Now we'll just uh, we'll uh, just buy a, 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 a frigate like a condor because we we're going to make something called bookmarks that enable us to dock very easily. So we're just going to buy this condor right here. But you could buy any frigate, but I'm just going to buy this condor because I know that it's very fast. You could buy any frigate. You could buy a Punisher. You could buy you could buy, buy all sorts of frigates. The main thing is a frigate because it's quite fast. And we're going to make some bookmarks to make so that we can warp to. A, location which will make it so that we can always dock straight away in the station so there's no opportunity for someone to gank us so you'll put a 5mn micro warp drive obviously because uh, the 5mn micro warp drive is uh, the, the, what you put on frigates you could put a 50mn if you have good skills and like but it's not very common at all that makes you go really fast and only certain ships can use that so if we go here in the fitting you can see here if we go and simulate we go 2.6k a second so we go pretty fast so the point is so you know i said when you just type warp to zero then you're gonna there it's like when you do warp to zero it has like a uncertainty of like plus minus two kilometers so that's why we're going to want to make a location that is right in the center of the station that even if we are the uncertainty of two kilometers we will always uh, be in the uh, place to be able to be instantly docked because you have to be at zero to be able to dock so we're just going to double click and just get into the, like the very center of the station right here so that we are always at close. Okay, this will be a good location. Just control space to stop, add location, and then we'll click dock. And what you often do is actually I put a little bit of a dot here. So it's at the very top so you can always access this. There we go, dock. And now we also are going to do something called a insta undock. So this makes it so that the second you uh, undock of the station, you know, it takes a bit of time for you to warp it could make, uh, happen that some people try to gank you uh, as well so you, people could try to gank you when you try to dock but we've got this dock bookmark here so we'll, we'll make you instantly dock but we also need a way to instantly undock so that people can't gank us when we try to undock and that's what we'll do right now so if we dock again and click undock what we have to do is we have to make a bookmark that is in a straight line from the station undock this will make it so that because you can see here we are 100 percent velocity right now so if we have a bookmark that's right in front of us then we'll be able to undock straight away and people like for example let's see if we can find a typical gank ship right here this tornado is a very typical gank ship so this guy maybe he would try to gank us now that we're on the undock right here but uh, if we have a, if we just warp straight away to an undock then we will always uh, get away straight away and we won't be able to get ganked so we could just go here and actually what you can do is you can hold down hold down Q and just make a straight line. Try to make it like a straight line from the undock path. So just make it like a line right here and then just put your MWD on. Then you should be able to get here. Now someone is actually targeting us. I don't know why he's targeting us, but we, we uh, will keep going. Make a straight line. You hold down Q. They just double click and the point is this line and now we have to be if we hold, if we click on the station we have to be over 150 kilometers because you can only walk to things that are over 150 kilometers from you so that's why we just keep going until we're over 150 kilometers away from you also something that i actually i didn't really mention so much in the industry uh, video and uh, fitting video was that there's something called tech 2 modules you maybe noticed this so we've always been going like small shield extender uh, we can see here this is a small shield extender right here and it's a tech one a tech there's something called tech levels in eve online and if we go here it says this is a small shield extender too so you, tech two items that's like a certain category of items so tech one items are ones that don't have this marking here the ones that have this tech two marking here they are items that are considered to be tech two items and they're quite special for various reasons they are a bit unique we can also go here in the five and a micro micro drive we've got a tech two micro warp drive right here you can see here this is a tech one 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 the ones with these kind of names like cold gas quad lif and compact they've all got like a slight tweak modification that they're like this one has got a bit better fitting space this one uses a bit less uh, capacitor this one also uses a bit less capacitor but uh, the point is these are all tech one but this one is tech two because it's got this marking up here and i've actually just noticed that we are in the location to uh, do our insta undock right here so what we can do is actually we just control space and put uh, dot undock 
there we go and since it's at the bottom I want the undock one to be at the very top so we put two dots now it's at the very top and the point with the, the tech 2 items is that they they've got very many common similarities so often they have a lot uh, worse fitting space so if we go here and type 5mn we see here we've got 190 uh, CPU to spare and 27 CPU to spare if we put a tech 2 one on We've got a little bit worse power grid, so they tend to have a bit more uh, harsh fitting requirements. They're a little bit more, they're a little bit bulkier, so it's harder to fit them on your ship. Also, they tend to use a bit more capacitor. You can see here, this is 1.1 gigajoules per second to spare. You've got a bit 0.7 gigajoules to spare, but this is not always the case. And then also, this is the main thing that they all tend to be a lot better than their Tech One counterparts. So when it comes to this MWD, and especially with our skills, there's not a big difference. So you see here, the Tech Two One we have 2.6659 meters per second and with the quad LIF 2637. So it's only a tiny bit faster. So I wouldn't say it's really worth it right here, but there are certain things that is very much worth it, like a small shield extender. So if we go on a small shield extender two, we have 2.2K EHP. You can see that right here. But if we go on a small shield extender one, we have only 2K EHP. So we do get like 10% more shield from this. So it's pretty good actually. But you'll also notice that there's a lot more fitting requirements. You see that 39 power grid to spare? We've got 40 power grid to spare with a tech one one. So that's just something you'll notice in general that there's always like tech one and tech two modules and tech two modules is harder to use them uh, it's harder to fit them on your ship but they also are a lot better also when it comes to the tech two modules they usually have a lot more skill requirements so if we go here and requirements what we need to be able to fly, use this 5mn micro warp drive 2 we need high speed maneuvering 3 here while if we go on the quad lif we don't need it we only need high speed maneuvering 1 and that's very common for all tech two modules like if we're going a small shield extender requirements shield upgrades three for the tech two one tech one one only shield upgrades one okay there we go now we've got the undock uh, done and we've also just gone a little bit through the tech two modules which is something actually important to understand because they are really good it's just that you need good skills and good fitting requirements okay so now let's dock up and buy our exploration ship to be able to go and earn some high risk high reward money so we're going to click right click and click on the dock here so we're going to dock straight away in our uh, in the station now we weren't at the good velocity so it did, well, obviously didn't dock straight away but we're going to now dock here left hold down left click and dock and then we dock straight away because we're at the dock point like we didn't have to travel a little bit until we could dock here Okay, so now if we go into fitting and we go into our start exploration ship, we can see we've got our fitting here. These nanofiber internal structures are good because they make us a little bit more agile and a little bit faster. So they're good to have when you're doing exploration. Um, also something to understand with fitting is that when it comes to like these fits, so these fits here, these are like kind of like blueprints of ships and you can actually share them with each other very easily. So if we just right click buy all, we're going to buy all these components from the store here. So we can, because we're in Jita, we can buy everything for a very good price. So 1.1 million here. It's, this estimated price is always a bit lower than what you actually get. It's just the nature of the game. Almost always. Sometimes it is a bit lower, but that's quite rare. So you buy this. Okay. So we bought all the items for this fit here. Now we'll click multi-fit. And we can click here, fit to ships. Now I'll kind of put all these items on the heron. And then if we go in a ship hanger, hanger, we've got the start exploration heron right here. And everything fitted and ready to go. So now we can load our core probe launches and get to exploring. Uh, also, something to know with fitting is that you can the, the way you share fitting is actually quite easy. So if you go on one of my YouTube videos, for example, so you can see here I'm using a rattlesnake fit here to do these blood raider sites here. So you can share fits. I always share my fits in the description or almost always. Uh, so you can see here when, when I say fit used, you can see there's like a bunch of text here. So you can actually just copy paste this and put it into evil line. So you highlight here near the name. So it says, don't highlight the fit used here. Highlight the, like the name, the rattlesnake, the name of the ship and scroll down until the last module right here. Then just click copy. Now you can import this into evil line at the import from clipboard. There we go. Now you can see here, we've got the rattlesnake fit here and I can click on simulate fitting to get it up right here. And I can obviously not fit this because I don't have enough CPU, but that's also because i am got a very high skill character that uses this ship. And if we want to save this to our collection of fittings, we just click save. There we go. And now if we were to go on uh, rattlesnake, click here, click here. And now we see we've saved this. We've got this here. Now we can access this whenever we want. And we can also buy all whenever we want. So you can see here, this is a very expensive ship, a lot more expensive than our tiny little heron right here. It'll go up more. You see that 1 billion almost.
So the point here is that you can find my fit in the description and he copy pasted the same way I did for that rattlesnake and you can import it and buy the heron the same way I did it right here. So we've got our heron right now. One last thing before we go out to explore, I would want you to set home station to the, uh, the station that you're in. So uh, I say that you should have your home station as this trade hub station, the way you've got all your items here. We can go here and right click and just set home. So we can go there and set the home station and you have to pay a little bit of a fee but now if we ever die we'll always respawn here there we go part seven is done we've set up our base in jita and in the next part we're going to do some exploration in that heron to get some nice gears can do a bit of a high risk high reward activity hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you found it interesting learned something new or enjoyed it in one way or another please leave a like and subscribe i'll catch you guys later